think you're all here for to hear about the budget. Um, and you've all now got your copies of the town report. Isn't it wonderful? You know who put this together, right? Right there, Barbara. Barbara, yes. Seven town report. It's beautiful, Barbara. Thank you've you. gotten so many compliments. Um, oh, thank you. I'm mean, I appreciate that. Um, and Barbara was the one who had the idea to do the flood report, for example. Oh, and got Erica, lined up Erica and Tobin to do it. And all kinds of things like that. Made sure all the pictures were in. Hounded the rest of us to do our pieces. <laughs> so. I love the picture of the railing at the pond. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Linda's <laughs> Can we point out that there's chocolate cake available? Oh, yes. For serve basis? It's Kari's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Kari. Well, yeah. yeah. Actually, Kari's, Kari's a week baby. So this is this, this year is his 14th official birthday. Oh. <laughs> That's going to be kind of nice. We <laughs> <laughs> had one other person that had the birthday, and they were from Calus. It was Rick Purchase. Oh, wow. I know Rick. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know uh, Ellie Hayes? Oh, no. She's also on the 29th. Yeah. yeah, we're pretty rare. Like one in 1,400. <laughs> <laughs> one in a million. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're here to talk about the budget. Um, most of you, I imagine you're here, you're all here, you've all had a chance to look at it. Um, I'm going to take a minute to explain the process that we went through, although many of you were involved in that, so you know about it already. And then we're going to talk about, in addition to the budget, and, and just as importantly, we're also going to talk about the one Australian ballot vote for a bond issue. And Donnie, who y'all know Donnie, who knows a lot about roads and things like that, is going to talk about that. And when Jordan gets here, he's going to talk about the budget. Um, so we started the process last September. Oh, okay. Um, as you know, uh, none of us have ever been through the process before. But we were really lucky we had the wonderful Sandra Ferber, our treasurer. Uh, helping us through it, and Sandra many times when I would freak out over something would say to me, breathe, breathe, <laughs> okay, now we're going to be okay, it'll be fine, and then she would talk me down and explain to me why everything was just fine. She, and um, she, we started out by Sandra just sort of built the budget to be exactly like last year's budget. Uh, and then we started hearing from all the people who were affected by the budget. For example, Tegan um, put together the town clerk's portion of the budget. Tegan and Barbara put together the office portion of the budget. We heard from the Planning Commission. We heard from the Conservation Commission. Everybody who had a piece of the budget. And it was really a wonderful process because it gave us a chance to sit down and talk with each of these people who do this work for the town and talk to them about what do you do? And tell us what your priorities are for the next year. And why do you need what you're asking for? But when we got done, uh, we had a double digit increase. <laughs> we just sort of were putting in what everybody was asking for. And we had this huge increase, which we knew <laughs> just we couldn't do, obviously. So the next thing we did, and I wrote about this in the report, so you've probably read this already is we said, OK, well, what are our priorities? Charlotte guided us through that part. She said, that's the first thing you do. Figure out where you want to put your money. Uh, we, we, we felt it was really important that we work on um, getting our staff um, salaries. And we spent, well, you've, all, you've probably all seen this chart in the back. We spent a lot of time figuring out what should our staff look like? What would the, how would the work flow? Um, who should be doing what jobs and what would be the most efficient. And then we, we looked at all the salaries of all the people together compared to you know, what their duties were and we talked with people in other towns and we compared um, what our salaries were with theirs and you know we had a negotiation with the road crew which was uh, a union negotiation. And that worked really well. Everybody seemed to um, be pretty happy with the result of that. And that was kind of what we took as the base to build what the other salaries would be. Um, 
as you know, though, um, health insurance went up, liability insurance went up, unemployment insurance went up, every kind of insurance went up. Mm -hmm. So every time you have a new employee, of course, or you give an employee a raise, all those other costs go up too. And that was a huge driver of the budget. <laughs> and the second priority, or actually equally pri prioritized, was getting good equipment for the road crew. In the past several years, we haven't actually followed our own capital budget. And the result was that a lot of our machines were breaking down. Um, the, poor, the guys, John can attest to this, <clears throat> were spending a lot of time in the shop fixing machines or taking them to another shop to get them fixed. And we felt it was time to really um, get our, oh, and our mower had, had actually bit the dust and we had to hire somebody out. We had to hire a, a machine to do it this year because our mower just died. So we spent a lot of time thinking about how to make that work. Um, and then we went, went through the rest of the budget and started cutting where we felt we could cut. Um, Toby worked on the highway portion of the budget with the road crew and did an incredible job. Uh, most of that was done by Toby, so he was wonderful. So with that, Donnie, you, we have some slides here, and Donnie's going to talk for a few minutes about the grader. Jordan, I don't know where you are, but I'll have to ask someone you. Someone named Jordan's here, but Jordan also just asked me to email him the link. So I'll do that. Oh, so he's going to go. Is he away? I didn't realize that. I didn't either. Uh, so. Okay. Well. Right. Let's let's hear from Donnie, and then we'll see if Jordan's around. And if not, I think Mari can help. Take you through that part. Can I just ask a procedural question? Sure. Uh, I have a list of questions in my pocket, mm -hmm. and I was kind of hoping it might stay there because you would provide the answers. But I already have a couple questions pertaining to a couple things you said. To the process? So, yeah. So at what point? Does it make sense for me to ask questions? At well, why don't we'll, we'll go through this, this okay. and then I'll open it up. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. How's everybody doing? Good. All right. Good. So we're here to talk about the road grader bond boat. We're looking to, hold on, I guess I can use yours right here. Um, looking to vote to authorize the issuance of a $335,000 loan, not bond, not to exceed 15 years. Um, and the next. So currently we have two graders. Um, Kari and I were emailing back and forth this week. I was looking to get some of the uh, information on how much we spent on the grader this year. Um, we're spending a lot on time um, that which wasn't accounted for in what we were kind of discussing because currently we don't have enough I don't want to say a detail on keeping track of everything that we are now keeping track of. Thank you, John. Um, so we have a lot more information, but currently we're spending a lot of money on the grader. We've spent this since July about $2,752, I believe it was, um, just in repairs. Um, and that doesn't include the road crew taking the time to repair it, to have to go get parts. Those are all things that are not included in that number. Um, with the increasing amount of flooding and mud season throughout winter that we've had, um, the grader has actually been one of their more used tools throughout the winter, which is not something that is normally done. Um, with that being said, the more that we get into stuff like this, it is going to be one of the really main used tools that they use to continue to, to maintain our roads and make them better than um, mud holes. <laughs> um, both the graders currently are in 97, both the John Deere and the Cat. Um, they are fairly old for equipment. I don't know if we have the hours. I think, I think one of them had over 10,000 hours, I believe, John. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, nonetheless, w with them getting that old, there's a lot of repairs. Um, and that's only going to increase as we move forward. Um, so a new tool to help them do their job would be 
will be great. Um, we are trading one of the current graders, um, and I believe that was the John Deere. Now I'm forgetting. Is that, the, is that right? Yeah, the John Deere, so you put one in the cat. Correct. Sure. Okay. So trading the John Deere um, and likely and to use the bond. Have, then we continue to have two? Yes. yes. Ah. Yes. You can do three miles, what is it, three miles, three miles of road? Of, three miles of road a day. So if when you, the day is greetable. Right. And we have how many miles? 88. It's a lot of miles. 79. Is it 79 miles? Miles of road? Of just dirt road, it's 75? No, 79 total. Um, there's about three and a half pavement. Okay. Three so, and so eight, yeah. Okay. Um, so yes. And then the interest rate will be determined at the time of the the issuance of the bond, first. which is part of our capital plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Any questions? Okay, I guess we'll do that. Mr. Lyon. What, how are you, Danny? Good, how are you? Um, let's see, another question besides my list just occurred to me. It's about, oh, the, the trade-in. What is the one you're gonna trade worth? How much would that offset the purchase price of a new one? I believe that the $335,000 is including with the trade-in. Of yeah, the machine. That, that's the that's what we were quoted. It was built in. I, I think it was in the neighborhood of twenty, something like that. But I don't know. In other words, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I was curious how much it costs to fix them, whichever one, which you said. Um, can you tell me how many days either one or both were down? And unusable, and and was was time lost because of that, or could the crew pivot to something else that they were working on? Um, I'll I'll let Ann speak yeah, to that a little bit more. They were down a lot. I mean, it actually they had to go collect it and somehow get it back to the shop when it died this summer. Um, I can't give you an exact number of days, but they both have ongoing problems and there's only a few number of people that can come and fix it. Mm -hmm. And waiting on parts <clears throat> and grading, as Donnie said, is really something that is ongoing. And like last summer we had so much rain, you can't grade when it's raining, but and you need yeah. to have a few good days. But you know, in theory, any sunny day that you expect the next day to be sunny, they should be out there. And because it takes so long to do one stretch of road, you really need to have two just yeah, because yeah. of our, our mileage. Um, and cost-wise, just we have other aging machines as well. I know I saw the International Dead on Friday morning down on Pack Hill Road. Yeah. You guys had to go collect that. Um, <clears throat> their last century, I mean, they, this will help. I have one that we know, God willing, it's not a lemon, you know, be in working condition and can be out there working every day that it can be working while the other one will probably have to nurse along for another decade. I don't know, but, but for a while. And there's a notable problem with the John Deere, it takes a lot of time, is that the machine doesn't have the power capable to run a carbide blade to cut the roads. So we have to run the old metal blades, and that requires daily rotation. Mm -hmm. and it's two guys unbolting two sections of blade, flipping the blades over, which isn't count. Mm -hmm. And that takes almost an hour each day for the John Deere. The cat had to buy special carbide bits so that it can be capable to grade because it doesn't have the power anymore. It mm -hmm. doesn't. It's not a big enough machine. The new machine should be capable of having carbide cutting edges on it, which will last a long time. And so the, the John Deere doesn't have the power. It can't run a carbide blade. It can't, but uh, the other one can? No, it has carbide bits. It doesn't have okay, the power to run a carbide blade either. A carbide right. blade's okay. gonna be, 
it's going to dig a lot harder than these machines are capable of handling. Yep. So that leads into another question I have, which was, did you look into uh, getting another less used grader? No, we did not want to use. Those were both hand-me-downs. Both those graders were used and done. So the chat was actually, was used by Marshfield and they were done with it. And it had used its purpose up and we got it. Mm -hmm. None of these things were done. I think this this new grader is a used one, but with minimal amount of hours, is it not? No, no, no. This was a new one. This was a brand new one. Yeah. yeah. Charlotte, is this a follow up to this discussion? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, because um, Craig has another question. Mm -hmm. so, oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh, right. I didn't know whether it was a yeah. follow up. If it's a new question, can you hold it till Craig is done? Sure. Okay. Thanks. It's, it's it's more a comment um, on what. Uh, what I think Craig is trying to ask is, is this really the best investment? And um, so uh, um, the most important thing is, I asked Ed, and he said, yes, we need a new grader. So <laughs> that is that. There you go. But the, but the other thing that I think is very um, sensible is that you have tried to spread it out over 15 years. And that's really good because most of our things are uh, smaller price and fewer years. Uh, but this, since it's so expensive, you're spreading it out over a really long period of time, which really makes the impact any one particular year pretty small. So thank you very much. That was great. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Oh, yeah. Is it, yeah, let Craig. Um, thank you. Um, and yes, Chart, that is uh, uh, trying to get to what is the best use of our money. Um, so what has happened with the equipment replacement fund? And I don't imagine there was ever $335,000 in it, but what money is in that? And it seems like the last few years that's gotten, at least in my mind, lost track of um, because we weren't always meeting in person. And so can anybody speak to that? Yeah, Kari, can you help us with that? I, I should have looked up what is in the fund. Um, currently, it's not a large amount. It's, it's not more than 100000 <clears> The <throat> select board actually allocated um, within the last couple of months some of the remaining ARPA money, remember the American Rescue yep. Plan Act? So um, that was put into that, but we um, allocated a good portion of that to the new mower for roadside mowing. <clears throat> so it's not, there's something there, it's not uh, where we want it to be. Um, and the benefit of having that, obviously, is that um, if we can use that to offset borrowing, that's less interest that we're paying over right. time. Right. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a balancing act. We're trying to make the investments that we need to to avoid the maintenance costs and the downtime for our crew, both of which are can be very expensive. Uh, and then factor again, what cash do we have? What are our priorities? And and what's the cost of borrowing and, and those sorts of things? We're, we're actually in a favorable borrowing um, time right now. And that, it's really uh, good to see interest rates coming down. So. Putting all that together, I think it was the judgment that, that you know that seems like a reasonable investment. And if I could just quickly, and I think Donnie had mentioned this, with what the road crew is doing now, and, and we had started it prior to the flooding, but post flooding, particularly with FEMA becoming involved, we have a lot more documentation as far as what's working, what's not working, what's things are we having to pay for like there's a lot clearer documentation so when we look at the month-to-month -month budget and it's getting better as we go along we can see exactly where the money's been been going it's more concrete so then we can see if we're spending so much money on repairs that it behooves us to get a different piece of machinery or you know in that fund yeah. we paid for a new truck because the truck their smaller truck the repairs were working Worth, we're going to cost more than the traded value. Yeah. So that you know, and right. so 
Yeah, we all um, do the same thing with our vehicles. Yeah, well, no, so, so as a town and as a board, you know, I, I think we've all been very conscientious of tightening up in the sense that we really know exactly how much money for gravel, how much money for diesel, how much money for gas, how much money on repairs, how much downtime, so that we can really provide a better picture as we go forward. Um, I mean, this year was a little chaotic with the floods, but it's definitely something that's in place and, and been ongoing. Yeah. I'm sorry, to, just one last thing. I'm not clear about the 15-year bond and a 10-year repayment plan. Uh, so we, those two things. We, we, we base the financing model on tenure, um, but then at the suggestion of our attorney, added some to it, so not to exceed 15 years. So that when we go, if we go to, to um, issue this bond, we have some flexibility depending on what interest rates are, cash, how much um, we want to lock into for those annual payments. Mm -hmm. So I think 10 is doable, 12 might be favorable, but we'll have the flexibility to choose. So I think obviously the sooner we pay it all back, the better. Yes. Yeah. The less like any loans. Yeah. In terms of interest, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Scott has a question. How did you guys, and I am so applauding you for this, decide to bring this to the town for a town vote on this particular item? What did you talk about? What, what was the process? And thank goodness you did it. Or maybe it was just automatic, but it's not always been the case. No, there's a, there's a cap. We, we can spend so much without asking your permission. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't it's remember. Really, it's really uh, it's the, duration. Length, of, length of time of borrowing. It's like working authorized up to five years, but beyond that. Um, oh, it's the bond. It needs to be voted. Okay. Uh, so it's the bond issue. But I, I would back up. Like the the source of this is there is a capital plan. There is a, you know a list of all the road equipment and and our other assets, fixed assets like this building. And I'd say we've done a really good job with this building and the office, obviously. Those are, those are pretty much paid off. But, um, but I think it's a, bit, a little bit out of balance on the equipment side. And so looking at what needs to be done, the greater, um, and, and you know, some of the trucks and the mower, you know, we're, we're at the top of the list. And we figure, how do we do this greater? It needs to be a bond. We need, we need to present this information um, to, to the town and see what they think. Well, I want to make one more point about, and this relates to the capital equipment fund. We should, I would like us to get to a place where we're having a consistent investment over time. And you don't see swings and we don't have to say, oh, we need to borrow 300,000. Um, it's going to take us a little while to get there, but it makes me very nervous to have two graders that are uh, as old as they are, approaching 30 years old. We would like to have, you know, ideally one that's 15 years old and one that's 30 and ready to be replaced. So. You know, it's long-term thinking that we're trying to employ here. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I assume that this new one is going to be uh, you know, 20 years improvements in the greater world. So <laughs> the you know, technology. Maybe more, you know, it'll be easier to train new guys how to run it. And oh, yeah. They're, they're, helpful they're, they're, they're very friendly <laughs> to new new people or even experienced operators that are getting into them these days they're they're it's you know it's just like cell phones you know they came from a flip phone and now they're a, you know you can do whatever you want on them any more on a greater oh. Donnie, is it is a greater a greater a greater i mean no how much and so i mean is a car a car <laughs> but you know you say greater and i my brain limited experience with them is, oh, it's a greater. And yet, what are we getting? What are we paying for? What do we need, you know? Well, some of them have uh, what what you call in a car, four-wheel drive. <laughs> like these, some of them don't. Um, that makes a big difference. I think that's part of what John's talking about is the power. When you have a carbide blade, you need all of those wheels to, to create power to dig. Right, because they could run the grader across your road and they could make it look really nice for about two days and then it's gonna come right back to what it is. So the idea is, is that they really have to be able to cut these out, otherwise they come right back. Yeah. You know, and if they can cut it out and they can do three miles in one day and they don't have to redo that same three miles in two weeks, that saves you a lot of time. 
I, I believe the calculation that we did was it would take eight weeks to grade every road in Calus once. With both graders operating. With both graders operating and two people gone every day. So that leaves you what's left of the road crew to do whatever else is left, which is a lot. Um, so it, it does make a big difference. Have you thought about running 24 hours a day? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to join the road crew? <laughs> Anything else on the grader? All right, let's move on to the budget. Uh, is Jordan there? So. Yes. <clears throat> Jordan, can you hear us? Can, can we hear you? He's muted. He's muted? Yep. <clears throat> can you, uh, how do we unmute? Oh, Jordan, would you please unmute? Can you allow me to turn on video audio? Hmm. Hey, well, we have a, a brief moment. The first thing at the top of my list I forgot, which oh, was yeah. I have a lot of respect and gratitude for the road crew. In, incredible work always, and even more so over the past year. So thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right, I see he's there, but he's muted. Can you ask to unmute? That might give him a Yeah, a little notification that he, he might be able to then accept. He doesn't know. <clears throat> well, Kari, I hate to do this, but yeah. do you yeah. mind walking us through this? Sure, yeah. So I came in this budget process sort of midway. We're just going to give a very high level. This is the... Um, for the summary. Um, all right, so the budget is divided into actually three sections. There's the general government that covers um, a whole bunch of different services, but the, you know, the office, the hall, the staff, it's not the highway department, essentially. Um, then there's the highway department, uh, which is primarily uh, the, the road crew and equipment and associated expenses of the garage. Um, that, those two portions are put together and voted on as a block. And then the third portion of, of what's voted on is the, um, the warrant articles, which you, um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But, but the, when we talk about the budget, in terms of what you're going to be voting on, it's the combination of general government and highway expenses. And this is just the, the, the big summary here is the general government, um, $729,067, uh, increase of 23% over last year's budget. Highway Department, um, $964,481, a decrease of 2%. So let me pause right there. The, the reason for those big swings is actually my position, uh, which is town administrator. That position was allocated, in a sense, to the Highway Department in the FY24 uh, 24 budget. Um, it was called the like Director of Public Works. Works. Um, and then the, um, that got converted to the town administrator and moved over. So, and at the same, at the same rate, um, uh, budget allocation of $80,000 per year for the salary. So that, that explains why there's such a big discrepancy in there. And then combined together, one point, uh, almost $7 million, a seven and a half percent increase. And it's, Ann said, started out quite a bit higher than that when we did the initial draft. I think we were up around 13%. We were just over. Was, yeah. was able to whittle it down to seven and a half. All right. So, um, and then within the Warren <laughs> articles, there are three big categories. There's the um, library and social services. So the library, Calabar library, is about half of this amount. Um, and then the social services is a list of what over twenty something nonprofits essentially. Um, all that together is 63,000, a little little down from last year. Emergency services, um, which is a combination of East Montpelier Fire Department and Ambulance and Woodbury um, Fire Department and Ambulance, that increased 8% to 307,635. That's the proposal that you'll vote on. 
And then the Cemetery Commission, and they um, are only asking for 45,000 this year, a decrease of 9%. So you put it all together, all three of those categories, general government, highway department, and ward articles, it's an increase of about 7%. Okay, and then we're getting into some of the key increases, and again, this is the, the budget, FY25 budget over FY24, employee wages is, is the big one. That's um, $87,000 increase there. Um, and so, um, Ann spoke to this, There's, there is um, some additional hours, but it's mostly in the form of wages, um, starting with the, the new highway department contract we have, and then um, increases for others. You know, this is what we saw in, in the school budget is that when you, when, you know, all the inflation that's happened over the past couple of years, it gets, it gets concentrated into um, certain budgets, and that's what we're seeing here. Um, employee medical insurance also saw a big increase, and that plan is offered through, um, uh, through our insurer, which is, um, offers uh, to most municipalities. So it's something that's negotiated on our behalf, and there's an economy of scale, but even, even there, it's, it's um, going up quite a lot. Um, and then fire and ambulance, as I said, that's, that's seeing an increase. Um, the single audit is an additional 10,000. That's something that's required because we are uh, hopefully going to be receiving quite a bit of money from FEMA. Yeah. And so uh, that, you know, um, that'll be required. And then an assessor. So this is something new that's been built into the budget. Um, the, it was anticipated that we wouldn't have any candidates for the Lister, Lister seat that's coming up this year. Um, and looking down the road, wondering if, if we were going to have a full um, uh, team of Listers in the future. And as some other towns are contemplating, thinking about hiring that out to some, a part-time professional assessor. And so built into this budget was one quarter, the fourth quarter, of an assessor at six thousand uh, dollars, we may or may not need that. Actually, we do have um, 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 a candidate for a uh, lister next year. But all told, together, um, the total budget increase year over year is one hundred and thirty-six thousand seven hundred fifty-five, up seven percent. And you'll see that these numbers, you know, the individual line items, total more than that one hundred thirty-six, and that's because it's being offset partially by other um, decreases. All right, and then I think we're just getting to the end here. Uh, this is just a breakdown of, of uh, you know, where does the money go? Highway department's the largest at 46%, general government 34. Emergency services is 15%, so that's a big portion, um, and, uh, and, and so on. And here's what the, uh, the warning looks like. Shallow voters authorized total fund ex expenditures for operating expenses of 1,693,548. Again, that's the highway department and general government, those two portions, of which 1,367,718 should be raised by taxes and $325,830 by non-tax revenue. That is detailed out in the town report. Um, it's things like all those fees that the town clerk collects, uh, current use uh, assessments, and, and so on. There's a, there's a breakdown of what that is. And, and you'll vote on the cemetery budget separately and um, the and social it, services. That, those will be separate votes. And the emergency services as well. Yeah. All right. Great job. Thank huh? you. <laughs> 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 all right. The questions on the budget now, on the general budget, on the whole budget. Yes, Scott. Back to the reader for just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> when will we get it? Uh, it takes a year, I think, after you. Well, we have to order it, so that's the first hurdle. And um, when we originally planned this project, we thought it would probably take about a year uh, because there are trucks that we order that take a, yeah. take a year to arrive. Um, it depends on who we go with. Um, Anderson, this uh, one uh, company that quoted us, Actually, so it would be about eight weeks. Um, so it could be it could be a lot quicker. Um, we'll also also have to work out the financing. The bond bank do, it, uh, does two rounds, um, so we're right in the thick of it right now. We were just were awarded for the, the Kurzban Dam. So there's the so the March 
um, pool and then there's the August pool. So we would have to, if this were approved, we'd have to get ready to apply, I think by May, to have a bond issued in August. Or we would have to wait until January to apply for March. Yeah, so not right away. Not right away, no. And in general, about this budget, great job. I mean, it's, I know how hard you guys worked at it. Can you do it again next year? Is this, is this what they call sustainable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got a good team. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, and we've got Kari now, so that's yeah. helpful too. Kari's been, got much larger budgets than this. <laughs> So, Mary, let me just pause and say, Mary Eileen is um, saying, I'm not seeing any people. Um, oh, should, 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 should I see everyone proposed to? It's the owl. It's because you have the screen share. Yeah. Once you because, stop screen it, it, sharing. As soon as I stop sharing, yeah. Mary, um, you, you'll be able to see other folks. So, I might just stop anytime. And other questions? I have a question. Yeah. I hope this isn't too late. This pertains to the Curtis Dam project. May I ask something about that? Yeah. Why not? Sure. sure, go ahead. I understand the importance of putting a greater out to a bond <coughs> bid, and I understand the bond bid for the Curtis Dam you know, was voted for. <coughs> but I've been going through the select board from years before. No one ever voted to own a dam. And you're talking about an increase in liability. I mean, why wasn't that? Actually, <coughs> we did. Uh, do, can you talk about the, that a little bit? Well, we saw it. We we agreed the, to enter into those quick claims. But we right. were, it never was put on the table. <laughs> right. We're not the, the greater. We're voting for a greater, but we never. Oh, voted. you're saying the town didn't vote. Right. Yeah, to we never voted dam. to own the dam. That's true. That was the the <clears throat> former select board before we all came on um, signed a memo of understanding with the Curtis Pond Association, uh, which which created a path towards fixing the dam, which ultimately would result in the town taking ownership once it's fixed. Okay. And that was a, the culmination of several years of discussions and negotiations, but I never heard any. But we never voted. It was never voted in never town voted meeting, town and just the bond was. Yeah, that's true. Craig, I put you off on a question that you wanted to ask earlier. Did you get your answer? Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I do have a couple comments about the budget overall. And I understand the process you went through. It's very clear. I appreciate you uh, doing what you could to lower it as much as you can. And yet a 7% increase together with a 18 to 20% increase in school portion of our taxes it's a 25% increase in our property taxes in one year. And uh, I understand the need for the greater. I'm just not sure a lot of people can afford this whole bottle of wax. And um, I have questions for the school board. I'm going to attend that meeting next Monday night. Um, uh, it, it's... I, I shudder. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, I remember the, the town budget yeah. used to be about a million, and the Callis school was about two. And now it seems like both have doubled. I mean, I, I can't even fathom the school district portion of it. It is $44 million, and none of that makes sense to me. <laughs> because, and, and now there are inklings. I read between the lines of Kari's post last week about, and we're reevaluating the use of our facilities. Two in particular will be looked at. Oh, what would those be? Worcester and Callis, I'm assuming. I don't know until I go listen, but the numbers scare me. Even 7% on top of. If I may, just while we worked on this budget as someone, here. yeah, who could struggles, my house is cold all winter, you yeah. know, I spent one entire winter feeding my kids nothing but macaroni with olive oil because I couldn't afford groceries. Yeah. So um, we had a lot of very frank conversations about affordability. I have no control over the school budget. Um, right. And that's 
you know, but we went, we almost cut ours in half and we cut a lot of things that people are going to be really bummed out about and that have always been kind of sacred and um, always been there and I, you know, we've asked a lot of people to take cuts, but the, you have to pay people and um, being able to pay people what ultimately probably isn't a living wage anymore, you mm -hmm. know, but insurance benefits and those things and the level of things that municipalities have to do now necessitated having a <coughs> administrator. I mean, I was kind of, man, do we? But then, I'm so happy to hear that, you know, because it's really been, you know, this summer, we're like, we have jobs, you know, and, well, and I, I had a full time, time job too. Like, it was this, yeah. you know, it was <laughs> like summer. full time, even before the flood, just, it was so much. I know in Anne was just working like seven days a week, just to stay off on a volunteer job, um, <clears throat> which isn't sustainable either, right? Because we want people to be able to, right. to yeah. do these positions and, and, and participate in a select board um, and have capacity to do that and not be exclusionary to certain people that can't because, you know, they're trying to keep food on the table like me. Yeah. So, um, so we I didn't try. Can I, I think one other aspect of our deliberations on this uh, that's important here is we've talked a lot about sort of cost now versus cost later. And, you know, sure, there were other things we could chop. We could not put money into you know, a technology reserve fund or something, but then next year we have to put twice as much in because we have to replace the server and we have to. So I think we tried really hard to juggle the keeping this year's budget increase as small as we could without, you know, getting ourselves into trouble in future years. It's that balance of mm -hmm. planning and sustainability. Thank you. Uh, Charlotte. Um, this is really tough because uh, Craig is absolutely right. We yeah. cannot afford 20% tax increases. We yeah. can't. That's not something you can reasonably ask people to do. Yeah. And um, the thought of people, you know, who are on fixed incomes, it's just scary. Um, It's, you can't do, ask people to do that. And I don't know what the answer is. There's no clear answer <laughs> except we need, and we, one year only in my experience, the school and the town cooperated on who was going to increase, you know, so that we could, <laughs> you know, so that we could have a manageable increase between the two of them. But usually they're completely independent. And we just add them together and say, oh, well, this is what they add together to. And I don't think we can do this this year. I think, and our CLA, you know, ugh. So when you put all of those together, it isn't something people could do. I think that both the education and the town ah, need to identify a few things that if we really are up to 20% that they could cut to bring these down for people. And I know it hurts. I know it. And I think you did a grand job. I, I'm Absolutely, you did do a grand job. But together, 20% doesn't work for anybody. Well, it's 27% job. 20% is school. Well, I mean, we don't have I mean, the so, so well, you're, No, your a seven percent increase doesn't translate into a seven percent tax increase. No, but right. I'm saying that the twenty percent you're looking at probably with an eighteen percent or twenty percent school, twenty-seven percent. Not including we're what point seven two CLA, so yeah. that's additional. So we don't know until less until later what the actual tax increase is going to be. Right. And that's what really matters. Right. Yeah. Not so much the increase, but right. well, how does it yeah. translate into taxes, and we don't know that. Right. And that's terrifying a lot of people. It is you know, terrifying. We had a person at our town meeting planning day who was talking about having to sell off pieces of land just to remain in their home. Yes. You know, they don't want yes. to go to a special place. They want to stay at their special place. Yes. And 
you know, there's a lot of folks, a lot and of she's families. And she's not the only and, one. Well, no, yeah. that's, it's. So I, I, I'm just saying, I know. in case it's really that bad, try to at least discuss what might we offer up. Yeah. Even we, though, have, we have done that, Charlotte, yeah, and, yeah. and all we could come up with, I, I'd have to look at the list, but it was essentially cut the reserve funds. And Jamie just addressed that as to why we're. I hear you. You know. I hear you. It's I mean, hard. we didn't fund the Curtis Pond dock the way they wanted to. There were some other things we, uh, the conservation yeah. people wanted more, and we didn't get yeah. it to them um, for that reason. Uh, just a minute, John. I think Jake is next. James. James. Oh, so oh, James. James. No, it's okay. It's okay. Sorry. Um, you that. So. First off, the town did a fantastic job. Thirteen percent to seven and a half is a massive, massive cut. Um, the large portion of this tax increase is coming from the state level, not the local level. That's the state school yeah. tax is going up approximately 18.5% across the state. That's so the local schools have cut their budgets as much as they possibly can. <clears throat> the state is the big driver for this massive jump. Well, I, I completely agree that it, it's a lot of money to increase in one year for property owners in general. Uh, it's the schools can't cut much more out of their personal budgets. John, did you want to add I to that? I just, just want to say what he just said. I mean, the state has a failed education plan right yeah. now. It was supposed to benefit towns, and it's turned against us. Yeah. yeah. So where's Mark at? <laughs> where's Mark at? <laughs> <laughs> I do believe he's at home. I think he yeah, drove past, past my house before I left. <laughs> <laughs> In the basement, <laughs> he might be. <laughs> they're, they're saying the cabot could be going up 46 percent. Oh my god! Oh my god! People yeah, can't do uh, that. some of the other towns are talking those yeah, kinds yeah. of rates too. It's yeah. Um, do we have any other questions about the budget? Things we have control over, <laughs> <It's not laughs> yeah. <the budget's laughs> Fortunately, um, yes, we uh, uh, I uh. Um, just wanted to say that it doesn't appear that the staff <coughs> pattern, uh, and, and particularly the office staff, it's not clear that that's been decided uh, completely. Uh, there's a, the, I noticed that when you add up the assistant treasurer, assistant um, clerk numbers, uh, comes out to I think uh, close to two full two, two full time people, but that's not the, the setup we have now. Um, so I, I'm just it would it would help me and maybe other taxpayers if they knew how, what the staffing pattern exactly was going to be. The, the, was, is it going to be a full time assistant clerk or or just a half time? Yeah, we're we're, we're sort example. of as Cardi gets you know, more experience with it. We're working on that. Um, Kari, yeah, at the so, moment, are we ready so to one, say? Well, yeah, yeah, well, okay. that, we have a, a plan that's built into the budget. But one thing to point out is that this year that we're in currently, our treasurer is, a, is, is basically an independent contractor. San, Sandra came back, but she did it on, a, on an independent basis. Um, so it, it's a little, it makes it hard to compare apples and apples in that, in that way. Uh, but our plan for next year is, um, when Sandra retires, to appoint my position to be the treasurer and then eventually hire an assistant treasurer to help with data entry and, and some of the lower level functions. And so that we, it's budgeted at 20 hours per week, that position, but I'm not, it's not clear to me that we'll need that or something maybe less. I'm sorry, maybe I misheard, but did you say something? Uh, your position being eliminated and uh, no, he would be no, absorbing it. Be, be appointed the, Car the treasurer in addition to being the town administrator. Kari will have three positions. Oh. <laughs> he's going to be the road commissioner. Yeah. He's going to be the treasurer, and he's going to be our town administrator. And he's going to have some assistants to help him with that. And none of them will be full time. And, and, and that's. You know, well, honestly, that's not the, the model that was presented to me when I was hired. That wasn't the that's thing. Right. <laughs> However, when we got into this budgeting process, it became very clear we have to make some hard decisions about what this staffing, the office staffing model is going to look like. And 
that seemed to be a reasonable, you know, next step for us. I think it would help people a lot if that were explained okay. um, publicly somehow. Um, Thank you. That's good feedback. I think Jordan wants to talk. And, and just to address that, thank you, Reed. It is that way on the organizational chart. In, in, in the, the one block, it does show town administrator, treasurer, and road commissioner as one person. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do I know who wants to talk? Did he's unmuted. <laughs> I think I'm unmuted. Can yes, you guys we can hear, you. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I'm very sorry for the the disconnect in the beginning there. I'm still not quite sure why that was happening, but uh, calling in from Lancaster, fresh off of my training responsibilities. So, uh, Kari, uh, thank you for picking up my shortcomings there. Uh, but you know, I think. Um, I, I have been listening all along, and I, I do really appreciate the dialogue. Um, it, it's for this board in particular. It was really hard to come into last year um, and uh, get a sense of what our needs were um, and, and how do we continue on um, the the good the good faith work that the that previous boards had put into trying to um, assess what the town's staffing needs were and what the positions were. And we, we were incredibly fortunate, I think, to have um, Kari and the road crew members that we have who have a lot of knowledge about the town um, and its infrastructure. Um, uh, so, you know, in, in hiring Kari and putting him uh, in the town administrator position, um, it really allowed the select board to do more longer term planning that was much that that's much needed. And, you know, that's what you really want your elected officials paying attention to. And, and we really can't do that unless we have a we have a staff that um, that is adequately covering the administrative work of uh, of the office. Um, and, um, and we're now realizing what those efficiencies look like and those advantages look like. Um, so there are still positions that we're not quite sure, or roles, I would say, not positions, roles that we're still trying to figure out you know, what's reasonable for a single individual to, um, to play out while also allowing um, part of the opportunity to feel out uh, and say what, what, those, uh, what those roles should be and, and where we might be able to um, to absorb them through existing staff, or um, or to uh, or to hire them, but I, you know I think what we found as a, as a community over the last couple of years, it is it is incredibly hard to find people who can do the work proficiently, um, uh, and not only is it hard, it's really expensive, um, and. Um, you know, I, I feel really confident about where we landed uh, and, and comfortable with where we landed with the negotiations for, uh, for the road crew um, and that staff. Um, and I feel really um, comfortable and feel it was appropriate where we landed with the existing staff. Um, and that's just, that's, the, that's my 10 cents or 20 cents or however many cents. Uh, Thank you, Jordan. All right, if there's nothing else, I think we'll um, end this part of the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Appreciate your input. Appreciate the responses. Thank you. Thanks. And don't forget the cake. That's all I'm looking at. Does anybody have any information on the cleaning machine? That's <laughs> 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 Okay, with that, we'll move on yeah. to the administrative yeah. portion of the meeting. Yeah. Uh, minutes of February 12th. Y'all well, had a chance to read them. Thank you, guys. Hey, John, Charlotte. Let's have a meeting here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, minutes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 12th? 
as written. So moved. Okay. You got three. You got three. Donnie and Jordan. 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 I prefer to be one of them seconded. Seconded. Okay. <laughs> second. Okay. One of them second. Donnie is making motions. Uh, you know, Donnie, you've, you've come a long way. Uh, <laughs> just learning when to say I, it. I will, I will happily second uh, Donnie's uh, motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Um, you've all had a chance to look at the board orders. Can I have a motion to approve and sign the board orders? So, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying to be hey, this time, you were going this time so. Anne moved and Donnie seconded. How about it? There you go. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, the chocolate cake. Municipal Climate Relief Fund loan. So, Are this you? is a line of credit type of loan, cash flow loan that the state uh, bond bank is going to provide. Um, we've been told that we've been our, uh, uh, there'd be an announcement on Friday, and in fact, uh, they weren't ready. So um, we were, they did indicate we'd probably get around $100,000 of the 500 that we applied for. Uh, they will, um, they're saying now that they will make the announcement March 13th, so after your next meeting, uh, with a closing a week later. So I hope to bring this to the resolution to accept um, to you know, authorize that, that borrowing so we can go ahead and close, even though the, the amount's going to be a little bit uncertain, I believe. Um, and then I'll contact the bank um, and prepare to um, you know, draw the line of credit for the balance of what we need to get through. And we're definitely going to need the entire 100000 Yes, the question is how much do we need above and beyond that. And a lot of that depends on when the FEMA money starts flowing, um, but there's also the uh, correspond dam construction and how much contractor will need. And then the third part is the reappraisal. And um, we know that the, those payments will start in July, but I don't know the amounts yet. The, actually, the price of that contract has nothing to say. So chances are we're actually going to need more than a hundred thousand, and we'll oh, have to draw on the line. We, we applied for five hundred thousand, um, thinking yeah. that that was the number. It is a bit of a moving target, but something in the neighborhood of five hundred thousand. And and you know, when the FEMA money comes in, we'll be able to repay. <laughs> All right. So there's no no action. Nothing, nothing what do we have now. to do today? All Excellent. right. Any questions for Kari on that? Okay. Um, fire alarm system. We received a grant for that. Right, so we applied for a grant from Passive, which is our insurance company. Uh, this is a safety feature, obviously. So um, they are awarded us this grant of $2,500. Uh, the, the entire project would, will cost, um, what did I say, $5,320. So um, I'm going to ask you to authorize the spending of $2,820.22. That would come out of the town office reserve fund, where there is over four fifty-four thousand dollars. So I think it's a pretty pretty good investment. And basically, getting half off. Fire alarm second. Okay. Yeah, and it's a it's it's a it's a system that will be monitored remotely, right? It's not just a something that makes noise. It will be it'll indicate to to to, to James say. Um, <laughs> to, to get out of there. <laughs> I'm not the one monitoring the invisible alarm. <laughs> Who's the one who gets called if the town office? Is, is uh, uh, we don't have we, we don't have any alarms there, so we don't have anybody signed. Oh. Toby is for here. John is for the garage, and now we'll need to assign it. I'm assuming this is Seco Security. Seco Security. We'll need to assign somebody for, to be the alarm person because when they call, so they'll they'll call the the fire department. Uh, <laughs> well, plus they'll inform whoever we give them in town. So, so I have a, it's related to emergency services at the building when the fire alarm comes in. Do you guys have what's known as a Knox box, like a box on the outside of the building for us yes. to get in? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, Toby uses it and you, you, you would do. Yes, we have it. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Curry, is there any action required of us right now? Yes, yeah, so authorize the spending of $2,840.42 from the town office reserve fund. And are we going to, oh, I see. So we don't need to sign anything. 
No, we just no. need to authorize the spending. Okay, will somebody move that, please? So moved. So moved. <laughs> so I think Jamie moved and Jordan seconded then. Um, Rose, did you get the, the um, motion or do you need that repeated? You mean this one? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I think I already know about it. Okay, so right. that's a right. yes. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah, the <laughs> task of right is this much, but yeah. you need extra, so you're going yeah. to take No, but the motion, the, the motion is to authorize the expenditure of $2,820,000.42 out of the office reserve fund yes. to pay for the fire alarm system. Got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the motion passes unanimously. Um, okay, when we hired Kari, we paid him a little less than um, we were uh, said we would after the first three months. We said we would give him a little increase up to the full amount that we put in the budget, which is the 80000 We met in executive session last at our last meeting and said, yes, Kari's doing a great job. Kari gets his raise. So I'll take a motion. I guess how would that work? A motion to increase Curry's salary yeah. to eighty thousand, effective immediately. Or, or effective with the next pay in the period, next pay period, which would be Monday. Next one. Next one. Okay. All right. Would somebody like to, Jordan moves it. You wanted it. You can second. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> you You're it. faster than me this time. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Public comment? Anybody? Yeah, Scott, I can always count on you. My mouth was full of cake. It was good. <laughs> it was very good. Thank you, Scotty. Oh, it was thank you, Barbara. Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. She thank you, Barbara. All the, all the <laughs> I'm sorry to jump in your head here, but I want to leave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love your directness. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that uh, the Curtis Mondan, that first bullet, the words I'm reading is, in order to clarify that the town does not own the dam and will not own the dam until completion of the project. And it's not a question. I don't have a question about that. But FEMA has already given us $34,141. Um, we've received this. I mean, the money has been allocated by FEMA. And that assumes that we do own the dam. So for clarification, somebody should talk to Toby. Mm -hmm. Uh, for clarification of what? Whether we own the, if we don't own the dam, I don't know, do we own, own we the dam? Do we do not own the dam. We do not own the dam because we have not signed the quit claim deeds and we don't intend to until the dam is repaired because we can't get insurance until then. You must giving that, giving us that money with the understanding that we do, yes. that we did own the dam yes. after the dam. Yes. So, so yes. don't talk to me. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I wonder if, um, this is like a pretty extenuating circumstance uh just because of the timing of the project and the process that we're going through and then the timing of the event and so i um i i wonder if there is some language uh that one of the lawyers can um can come up with to to supplement that application that basically so that the deed work has been completed they're just there it's a, the deeds are essentially being held uh, the ownership and deed work is being held in, in escrow until the project is complete because that's the only way we can kind of transfer ownership that's how this naturally plays out so um it, it it's definitely going to require a conversation both i think with fema and and probably with our lawyer um to to determine how, how we could work through that. This is fairly unique, but I don't I don't think I, I would well, have to think I would have to assume that somebody yeah. female would, would would probably understand. Take a look at the language that that Thomas has written. It says improvements financed with the proceeds of the bond will be used for public safety and owned by the borrower. So it says it will be owned by the borrower. There's no question that we will take ownership. The FEMA gave us that money. That was the first chunk of money we got, um, with the understanding that we owned the dam at the time of the event. Mm -hmm. 
Just that was very it's not something that we want to clarify it's because it's not pretty clear that yeah they I'll, I'll bring it up with Toby yeah, and okay. we'll strategize how to present this yeah. information. Great. All right, thank you all. Great job. You don't want to hear about this storm water thing? And no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, no, we don't want to hear about this. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm glad it got Okay, thank you. Anybody else with public uh -huh. comments? <laughs> okay. Bye. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Um, preparation for town meeting. I don't know what to do. I mean, I think we're, we're fairly in pretty good shape. Yeah. Anybody have anything that's come up that they want to talk about or the things they're concerned that might be raised? Should we move on from that one then? Yeah. All right. Curtis Pond Dam. Oh, that's the one we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that one off, even though we're going to. Uh, this has to be signed on the 13th. Excuse me, the closing on the 13th. Um, Thomas Maloney said that you could just authorize this change verbally. If it's captured in the minutes, then he'll make that change to the document or okay. however we're at the closing. So we'll put that off and maybe we'll do something on the 11th or maybe. No, no, he's asking that you, that you make this change tonight verbally. It'll be, it'll be reflected in the minutes and then. Um, but he how said, he said it's a minor enough change that the document, he can update the document like a yes. screw. Yes, but correction. Scott's concerned that if we do it tonight, we lose the FEMA money. Oh, I didn't take that because the, the town doesn't own, own the dam. That's the fundamental Well, no, but the, but the FEMA is giving us 43000 predicated that we own it. Well, we so, don't. Right. But whether, <laughs> no, I know that, but it was implied that we did. But whether so we could have to give the money back. That's yeah, but I don't. I don't think that what what you do tonight affects that. Right. Whether or not we make this motion, that's a conversation that's going to happen with FEMA, and this motion isn't going to change the outcome of that conversation with FEMA. Okay. Well, I mean, we can't really. We don't know it, so we don't this would say that. I mean, that's you know. So that's yeah, I don't want to right sign on. something that says yeah. we own it because we don't. Right. We don't. Well, no, exactly. So that and, and we don't want to um, mislead FEMA about that either. Right. So that was Scott's point, I think. Okay. He was just sort of reminded by this this language. That this yeah. Was. Yeah. Okay. So um, what's the sense here? Do you want to go with this language that Thomas drafted? It would be okay to go with the language. I think you know when you talk to Thomas. Uh, the conversation that we had here, you know, uh -huh. so he's aware of it. Yeah. Um, I think that'll because work. he can yeah. probably provide the add ins and then, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry, Card, we have to do this by a resolution? No, you can verbally authorize this change. Okay. Tonight. So, and we that'll be reflected in the minutes. I'll let, I'll let Thomas know. Okay. And he'll just adjust the document. So, we need a motion to. Um, a, uh, authorize adjustment of the document as uh, from <laughs> as written in the minutes. I mean, in, in the agenda. Yeah. All right. Who's going to get? Who's going to move that? Go go. Oh my gosh, so moved. <laughs> okay. And <Awesome>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like all I have to do anymore. Would somebody <laughs> please second? Somebody please second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 I abstain. Aye. You're abstaining. That's so, right. Uh, Jamie abstained. So um, speaking for a moment. So all I did was that language that was already there on the. Um, yep. So I just wrote that and made that into a motion, and so this all stays the same. Right? Correct. Right. That, that is the okay. change. Yeah. Got it. Okay, um, but, Jamie, oh, would you like? Oh, so oh, is this going to give an update? Yeah, I, would you, I, I don't know if she, Jamie want, has anything, but if you have an update on where you are at this point, would you please share? Well, I, I can share that we updated the sources and uses budget. There's something that Ann asked for during that whole process. Yeah. So, like, what's where do we stand? Where is everything? That, that was certainly on my mind. And, so Mark Sweeney came in and, and Jamie and I just went through and matched up. I was so impressed with this. We matched up the um, Chris Pond Association's accounting with our the town system's accounting, and it was to the penny. Yeah. I was really impressed. So we have a really good sense of what has been raised and what has been spent so far. We spent to date uh, seventy thousand uh, dollars, seventy thousand four hundred thirty-three dollars. So. Most, most of that's been engineering. Yeah. 
And mm -hmm. so my question is just exactly how much hard cash do we have right now? Um, is it the 236? Because things like pledges, I'm yes. assuming those are money we don't have. Those are right. in no. theory money. Okay. The, two, the 235 plus the 100 um, plus the 8,500 in old pledges. But that's money that is in hand. Well, except that some of it's been spent. We spent 70,000. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but you're exactly right. We, we are waiting on the lion's share. We want, or we're a good portion of it. We're waiting on the for the bond, and we're waiting on that that last item, the the, the two hundred and thirty-two thousand. Okay. Right. Uh, and we don't have the new pledges in hand. Right? Okay, pledges. so that's the old pledges that's are right. in hand because that's what I'm asking because it's great. Old, that old pledges, are, today. old pledges, we 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 have, right? We have. Yeah. Yeah. Those were collected. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. So we're looking at just under four hundred thousand ish. In and how much we have? Well, then how much we need, need, like in we, hand between. So we need the bond. That's imminent. well, that I'm not counting. Okay, that. we need yes, we need the new pledges, uh, and we need the grant future donations. Donations and other. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Two what? So what is that total number? Um, Two thirty-two and one hundred and sixty thousand. So it'd be three hundred and ninety-two thousand. And then combine that with the bond, and then. So that's the piece that's missing. missing. In addition, yeah, yeah. No, that's not yeah. hard in our and, pockets. And, and we're very confident about the new pledges. We're yeah. pretty confident about the, the either the grant and or the, the remaining donations. But yeah. that's what you'll need to see on March 11th. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a whole lot to add other than there's a lot of confidence that. Uh, we're going to get there. We're, everyone's optimistic that the grant will do that. Um, but there's a lot of conversations happening and, and money that can be raised in that last week once we know about the grant. So, and we've had a lot of people working on getting the grant, I believe. Yes. Yeah. The, um, I know Mark has been haunting the agency. Yeah, they've gotten letters of support from um, three or four different local representatives from area towns. Um, and I know I, they're not saying exactly when we'll know. Um, I know their next meeting is Friday, March 1st. Um, so presumably they make decisions then um, and notify shortly thereafter. Um, and then we'll have a week or 10 days to, to uh, Sort of finalize all the numbers and see where we are. Down to the wire. Yep. And we were alerted to the interest rate on the bond, which came in 3.81 percent, which is uh, quite a bit better than what we had initially planned for, four and a half percent back in December. So it's good news. Great. Yes. Thanks for um, providing us with that. If did you guys get a chance to look at that? I I printed out the few pages that were just the callous numbers. If anybody hasn't looked at it, I have it here. But you have it on your yeah, in the tomato. So it, it tells you what the interest will be and so on. Okay, anything else on Curtis Pond Dam? Um, stormwater. Curry. Yeah, so this, remember this came up two weeks ago when the CVPRC was here, Brian talked about the two East Calais stormwater projects, which I had never heard of. So that was all we to Dr. Brian last week. And uh, he explained that this was part of the master planning for the Kingsbury branch in this part of the world. And uh, two, you know, they, they had identified like 40 projects and then they narrowed it down to five and two of them happened to be uh, in East Calais. And so the great thing about this is that it's essentially fully funded. Um, that, that's the plan anyway. Um, they still need to go out to bid to the contractor. They have full, completed designs. Um, they'll go out to bid. If there's a gap in the funding, try, we'll address it somehow or other. Um, <clears throat> but I, there really aren't any downsides to this, these projects that I can tell. Uh, we, we're just asking that uh, select board pledge support for it, just as an indicator to the, to the you know, on board. 
And then we would want to inform the neighbors that it's, it's on because it's been paused for a little while. But other than that, I think it's until it's good news. Oh, there is some ongoing maintenance. I mentioned that. <clears throat> and that can be um, handled by our road crew if they have the right equipment. I guess they, they have like vacuums that pull dust out of the like, catch basins. That, that's yeah. news to me. The factor trucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're just kind of like a porter potty. They just show up and pull the top off and suck it away. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, I had to look up SLR International. They did the engineering. They're, they're a huge firm. They, they, on their website, they have mega projects that they do all over the world, and they designed East Catalyst's stormwater. I think it's European or something designed. I, I didn't know that. Find out there was they, a while they have offices in Europe and Canada and mm -hmm. India and all, all over the place. It's really pretty amazing. There's this whole process yeah. of stormwater planning. It's new technology. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I did want to offer, since it's literally my neighbor's yeah. <laughs> I can go you around can do the and part. I can do the informing part and Great. just wanted to offer if there is right now. It seems like it kind of moved on its own, but if you need more, okay. working with a guy, because it is my front yard. Um, I think James had a question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the old mill dam that's right there in the village near the post office, mm -hmm. uh, does this project take into account at all if this dam does end up being removed? I don't think so. I think it's um, primarily focused on the branch that runs behind it. Yep. Um, that's been having a lot of erosion problems yep. in that by the post office. So uh, I, I think that we should Brian, let Brian know that that will be, but I, well, the state's going to provide money to take that dam down. Right. I don't know when it's going to happen. Right. So, yeah. So, Kari, what do you need from us tonight? Um, to, so there's a sample oh. letter in the folder, and it'd be nice if you authorized me or, and to sign it. Okay. It's, okay. it's very sort of cool. Yeah. Um, oh. Rose has suggested a couple, um, and it's oh, East Cal's post office, office yeah. just to mm -hmm. be clear, and then sites is plural at the, in the last sentence. It's, it's, I mean, you can say whatever, just as long as it's expressing. So support. this is a to whom it may concerns <clears throat> letter, and it commits us to maintaining the project for at least 10 years. Yeah. All right. Would somebody like to move to authorize um, one of us to sign the letter, which is going to go to the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation? Who's paying for the, the work? Who's paying for it? Moved. Okay, Anna's moved. Is there a second? second. Oh, wait a minute. Who's going to sign it? Sign you it? can sign it. Kari can sign it. Um, well, uh, you have the letter there, right, Kari? When you pick it up. I, 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 I haven't made the changes that Kari suggested. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, I, okay. I, I, is it okay if I do it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You Please. have some changes? Well, Rose had suggested adding um, East Callus to clarify there, and then um, sites, and the last sentence be plural. Okay. With those Calus changes, has three post offices shouldn't just say the Callus Post Office, mm -hmm. right? How lucky are we? All right, do we have the motion clear? Um, Antula made the motion to authorize Kari. Kari's going to sign it. The letter to Vermont Department of Economic okay. Environmental Conservation. And uh, so who seconded? I seconded. Jamie seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank Aye. You. All right. Um, this could be a sh relatively short meeting, guys. Um, Tegan, do you have anything to report to us? Uh, I don't really have a lot to say that's new. Uh, we are in the thick of it, preparing for the election next week. Uh, we're getting a lot of ballots in. We are no longer mailing ballots out, but people can still pick them up if they want them and drop them back off. We're getting logistics down. We're starting volunteer election volunteer trainings this week uh, for folks to come in and learn kind of how things will be set up and how the day is going to go. 
Uh, Barbara and I are meeting with Chris Tuller this week to kind of start planning the setup for the gym because there's a lot <laughs> we need to fit in that room um, for the election this year. Uh, yeah, and then humming along with the usual clerk business, but that's kind of the big, the big thing that's going on right now. Barbara, feel free to add anything you think I'm leaving out. It's it's pretty much all about election this week. Yeah. Well, this is this is a first for Tegan, and once you've done this, Tegan, you'll have had a whole year. You'll have been through a whole I cycle. Said, that's it. This will be my first election with four elections going on and then we've got two more this year but i feel like they'll be sort of small potatoes compared to running this circus yeah all right well thank you um kari do you have anything else or yeah well i just sort of, uh, i mentioned the gravel the tire puncture concern i think you saw that in that mm -hmm. written hopefully that'll calm down now i think in part that was due to having freshly pressed gravel on top and then freezing in place um, and so with the warm temperatures this week, things are going to get squished in. Uh, we're going to go back to our ruts pretty quick here, but um, <laughs> uh, I just I want to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, also, um, they started posting the roads today um, because it's supposed to be in the 50s tomorrow. And um, it, actually for the foreseeable future. Is this it? Is this there's, fun season? Is this, this, this the is fun it. season? There's, there's Thursday, it's going to drop down to a high in the teens, but then it's going right, right back into the 50s. And, even in some 60s with some rain. So it should get interesting. Um, we had a safety inspection of our three facilities recently, the pa Passive, our insurance company. Uh, there were a number of low level recommendations. I mean, they're always gonna find something. That's their job is to help you be safer. There were two mediums. One had to do with the sand pile at the garage and it's so tall that the concern was to have the public have access to it, which I don't know if you knew that, but mm -hmm. the public can go in and pick up some sand. They, they suggested creating a secondary pile and maybe putting it outside, be it, you know, on the other side of the gate, so people could access it and, and just be out of the way of the crew. <clears throat> the other one was this building, the snow sheds that way, and they suggested signage and um, barriers or you know, some, something to, to um, indicate that that's not safe to stand next to the building. And then we also, I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, Peter Yonke from uh, Vermont Center for Independent Living, and Peter's a Calis resident, inspected this building and the office for accessibility. And um, we, we, we got some recommendations. The, the, the big ones that are a little harder to, um, what will be challenged on the planet was to, to pave both parking lots. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you can understand why. So when yeah. someone was in, yeah. in a wheelchair or, or just having, you know, um, yeah. mobility challenges, um, it wouldn't be, it's not that easy to get in these buildings. So. Um, we, uh, in terms of FEMA approvals, we cleared a hurdle today, which is the state is actually going to receive the money from FEMA and then write checks to us. And in order to qualify for distributions from the state, we have to be awarded, we have to be awarded a subrecipient grant. And the state let us know they have all the pieces they need for that. So getting getting closer. And this is for the Curtis Pond Dam reimbursement. No, well, for, for all of them. The Curtis Pond has already been approved. I, I believe the Moscow Woods, um, which is the, the single biggest item, has been approved as well. So um, so, you know. So when could we get the money? I mean, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. <laughs> Keep waiting. But, but I'm not sure what the, what the obstacles are to those two. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, that's So any, <laughs> it could be any well, day. It could, it could be any month. And if we get the money for those projects, we may not have to go on our line of credit. Is Correct. that right? Correct. Boy, that would be wonderful. That would be great. Yeah. And the last thing is I've been getting some um, fairly intense training in accounts payable for the treasurer function. And that's just in time because Sandra's heading off on a vacation for a couple weeks. So I'll actually be, actually be running the next um, accounts payable. Um, well, we'll function. officially be appointing you treasurer right after town meeting, won't we? Um, I mean, you could do it any time during March. Yeah. So we might want to put it on the agenda for maybe, maybe the second week in March. 
Okay. Um, and, and about the um, the snow coming off the roof, is that something, as road commissioner, you would handle? Yeah, yeah, I'll follow up. We'll figure okay. out something to do there. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be paving the parking lot anytime soon, but we <coughs> might. No, One thing I've seen places shoes. is like pave the two handicap spots yes. and the swath to this back entrance oh. without that having to do in, the whole. It could be done in stages, yeah. That could, yeah. that might be doable. Yeah. yeah. We're definitely trying to get it flat and because even for people using canes. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Impaired, it's, yeah. Yeah. So, in a, choppy. Yeah. So, we'll, that one's in the, Parking lot, and it would, you know, as soon as we come up as next year's budget. Yeah, no, I'm glad though that you got a chance to come over and. But it's, it's good to have that kind of expertise, right? Yeah. yeah. Make our yeah, for years. Okay. Thank you, Kari. Sure. Uh, Jordan, anything on IT? Uh, not at the moment, no. Okay. Um, Jordan and Ann, anything, anything on SHED? I can count to shoot you an email and I need to talk next time about it. Next time? Okay. All right then. Is there anything else? Really? It's only 730. I'm like, stop oh, saying that. Some of us have been a <laughs> 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 The next meeting will be the reorganization meeting, right? There's a yeah. checklist of things. The, that yes, yeah, so the next meeting we'll be looking at all the um, appointments, reappointments. Yes. So that'll be um, so it's okay. adopting rules of procedure. No, we won't be doing. You mean all the committee and commission? We're, what we're going to do about the second half of March, not not the first meeting, but That's the second right. meeting. Of I March. think we'll probably. We, want, you guys will need the reorganization. You guys will have to elect your new officer. Oh, right. that's yes. Yes. And, so and adopt rules of procedure again. And I anticipate maybe an executive session just to have a little conversation about how we want to do some personnel, by which I mean committee appointment things. Stuff like that. Okay. Okay. All right then. Motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Donnie. Oh, lucky you. Yeah. And second. Jamie seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Everybody.